Hello, and welcome to another Havoc Sons adventure video. Today we're going to be looking at a fairly rare computer. Uh, now, this particular model computer actually was pretty common, but this version of it was extremely rare. Now, I've been nursing this along for some time, and as you can see here, this is the Tandy 1000, the original first series 1000. Well, actually, this, I think, is the third series 1000. There's the Tandy 1000, then the Tandy 1000A, and then the Tandy 1000 HD, and that's what this one is. Now, I have been nursing this computer along for some time, and I don't know if you can hear it, but it definitely has some issues. Uh, the hard drive. Now, this is the second hard drive that I put in it. The original hard drive, I believe, was a 10 megabyte um, tandem, I think, which were horrible drives, and they didn't last. And, and So I replaced it with a Seagate 20 megabyte. Now, even in time... I'm having problems with these drives as well. So we're going to go ahead and take this unit apart today. We're going to look at the insides. We're going to look at the hard drive. And we are going to see if we can uh, get this one uh, running perfectly again. Why don't you join me? Well, like with most computers, you would originally start looking for screws on the back of the system. To remove it but that's not how these come apart now the 1000 series were a little rare because of a lot of the things that kept them somewhat proprietary and more importantly not very expandable as you can see here there's only three expansion slots external you got one fan that cools the entire system your power supply is over here, uses a standard computer modular cable. Uh, the front of it, uh, down below, can't really see it here. Let's see if I can turn it up for you a little bit. But there's one screw right there, another one on that end. I've already started removing it. So, let's open the case and let's see what's inside. So after you remove the screws, you just push it forward and it slides right out. This is pretty much the plastic part of it. This is not really shielded. I don't know how they got away with that. Maybe there was originally some shielding down here on the bottom but there's nothing here that shields this case now <clears throat> what makes this computer I think highly uh, rare is the way they set up the hard drive First of all, they went with a full a full size half height hard drive. Now this is the same uh, bit basic physical format, physical measurements as the original tandem that was in here, the original 10 meg. But this is a Seagate 20 meg. And if I sound a little under the weather, it's because I'm more than under the weather. I'm 10 feet underground. That even makes any sense. I got uh, the grandkids and all their, uh, and all their fun have uh, infected me with some type of cold virus that I believe was genetically researched in China. <laughs> or something like that. So let's look closer at the uh, actual setup. 
of this particular hard drive. Now, what's interesting, to get at this hard drive, you actually have to remove a lot of stuff. You gotta take this floppy drive bay out. Now, if you notice, um, this particular controller is a little bit different than the original. The original controller was a full card that went all the way over. And um, I'm using a Western Digital card that better matches the new hard drive. Unfortunately, the mounting hardware wouldn't line up, so this one is just in here. If I can ever find a tandem that is working, I would love to put it back to its original state. And that's what I'm really after. Uh, but just think of it as being a card that went all the way across. It looks very similar to this one. So let's start taking things apart. Originally, to get this out, what you have to do is you have to take out this bolt, this nut or bolt here, and then these two here. I think there's one. Yes. That one there as well. So let's get at it. You can see how much the room uh, that I built above my garage, it tends to lean just a little bit. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. So, the screws on this computer are not um, Phillips. Um, they, you can take them off uh, with a straight edge screwdriver, but I find it best to use these. I, I'll tell you, I gotta tell you, uh, I don't know, X Lite? I don't even know how you pronounce that. These have been around for a long time. It's a, these are a great tool. Uh, if I can tell you how many things I've unbolted in electronics with these, we'd be here for years. So I'm not going to go over all the bolt patterns. I'm just going to go... I've already pointed out the three... Actually, there's... <coughs> Excuse me. There's two here, two here, and one here uh, that you got to take out. Uh, sometimes you have to pull the power supply to get at that back one. Let's see if I can get it out, though, without doing that. You want to stay to watch the fun? Okay. I can tell you already that's not going to work. What's probably going to happen is I'm going to drop this. Uh, I, this screwdriver is not magnetic. <laughs> and that is going to be... That's going to be fun. Let's see if I can get something to get that out with. Well, that was fun. I should have filmed it. I cheated. I used those. All right. So let's see if we can get the rest of it out. Yeah, it looks to me like they didn't really think this through all the way as far as mounting this hard drive. Uh, there's a lot of issues, I feel, in removal. I think this one here is the last one. You know, and if you need more group, uh, grip, x Lite has a nice little, this little thing here, a little handle, give you more torque. I really do love x Lite products, but like Snap-on, they're quite costly. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's been so long since I did this that I've forgotten. But now I recall that the bake, 
this bay takes brings everything out with it. <clears throat> now, one of the first problems that you have is the stepper motor, motor bearings begin to fail. A lot of people use a lot of different things. Uh, so far, I've had good results with WD-40. Spray it in there. Let it do its business. And then it's also a good idea, after it soaks for a little while, to turn the machine on while the hard drive's upside down. That allows the bearing to soak up all of the fluid. So let me... Plug the computer in, and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so most of the liquid is already uh, seeped in. But let's go ahead and turn it on. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the spindle more modal motor is turning. And I can already tell, <laughs> just by the sound of it, that it booted to the C drive. Because it, I don't know if you heard it, but it, it, it hard drive came up to speed, and then it, uh, it did a quick seek. And the stepper motor didn't hesitate or bind like it normally does. And it, it caught the proper fat table parameters, and it booted. But let's go on to uh, look at the rest of the machine since we've got it open. So, it's like I said, it's a really unusual mounting system. As you can see, there's one cushion rubber piece holding the drive on that end and then there's a another cushion piece here and then a third one right there so it the the hard drive I guess they were really worried about shock because uh, I mean I can I can move it a little bit not you know it's not flopping but it's in there pretty good so this is an elaborate mounting system. And you can see that the floppy drive doesn't need that. So that's just bolted directly in uh, here, these two screws. And then these would be the nuts for the mounts, the hard drive mounts. You got more here and more here. Interesting how they put holes in here so that the cavity, the billow, probably has more room to move airflow which would give this a little bit more elasticity the rubber is a little more harder than probably original but it's still doing its job so is this overkill most likely but I doubt that any of the hard drives put in these computers died from shock Like I almost have several times in my life. <laughs> and interesting, this is all original. This was the original extension cable to give you a little more room. Of course, I used... This is a, a Western G Digital. This is the WX1. These work really well for 20 meg hard drives. Um, the WX2 is probably my favorites. But these are a good drive, a good controller for a 20 megabyte Seagate. Let's take a look inside, why don't we? Okay, so here's your CPU. Normally it's a standard Intel 8088, but I have an NEC V20 on there. 
and then your Intel 8087 is above it. Here is your smartwatch. And guess what? She is the dual battery smartwatch. And I've done a video on that. So she still has power and she, she still holds time. This is an expansion card. Now what this does is it brings it up to 640K. And I believe this board also gives it a DMA channel. It also has the capabilities of using this slot. You can actually if you see it down here, let's move this, which is kind of nice. You can put, plug in another card so that you can actually use this slot for like a modem or something that would come right into here. Uh, and I've done this before to where you, when you do that, you still have room right here. So barely, but it, you can. So that's one way of adding another card. So in, in all actuality, you've got uh, four ports, if you do it correctly. This board was actually made in 1985 and it was made in the USA. That alone makes it super rare. A motherboard made in the USA. And then, uh, of course, you've got your your power supply here. So let's put it back together and see if we get a boot. Why don't we? Let me just show you the tail end of this. For simplicity sakes, it just goes like that. Not bad, pretty easy. Okay, one of the things I like to do was I'm put, when I'm putting these back together is go ahead and put in all the, the bolts, but don't tighten them in all the way until you get them all in. <laughs> and make sure you put them in the right holes. Usually there's some minor movement that you have to make like I just had to make on this one to get them to fit. Now, I'm not attempting to put this one in right now because it's going to require a magnetic screwdriver. But I think for now we're fine to just tighten up a few of these and turn it on to see if we've got power. Or boot, I should say. And as you can see, this cable alone would not reach. So they gave you this little teeny extension. Seriously, that stock. And it does, it's interesting, it does fit just above the smartwatch. I mean, it just clears it. Let's see if we get this thing going. Let's kick the tires and light the fires on this bad boy. Connected the monitor. Let's go ahead and see. Now, here's a weird thing. Even though she seeks right away and gets ready to send a signal to the uh, central processing unit that everything's cool. It takes quite a while before it actually seeks and boots. At least that's what I remember. Oh, yeah, there it goes. So see, it does. It waits for the air, waits for the hard drive, the floppy drive to not be able to seek. Why it's taking so long, I don't know. Um, but I recall that the Tantrum, tandem hard drives, we call them, like I said, Tantrums, um, the boot time was much faster. So there, it could be missing, probably the original controller sent something to the bias that said, hey, Let's stop looking here. Let's go ahead and boot. But as you can see, it booted right to um, my, I love this, DA5 uh, memory manager. And uh, the hard drive is not seeking periodically as it used to. So now we have a 100% functioning, although it may not be 100% original, it's double the capacity, so it is an upgrade. They were tentatively around. These were available at the time of purchase, so you could get these. Oh, it's a blank screen, so it doesn't burn a hole in the screen. It blanks out.
Okay, so I buttoned it all back together because it is booting. And uh, it's, this has been a couple hours later in the day. And I got it all buttoned up, looking nice. And I've got it zoomed in here so that you can see the software that I'm using. But as you can see, I've got it all put back together. But I wanted to talk briefly about this software. This software has been uh, very good for me as far as maintaining my hard drives as long as I have. I have all, all of these computers here have pretty much all yeah they're all they all have mfm hard drives except for my my ex and and i keep them running in pretty good shape and i've i've uh with the tricks one of them i showed in this video they're they've lasted a lot longer than they should the hours on them but this is a program from microsoft called calibrate uh, I actually like Spinrite a little bit better, but for for right now I wanted to use Calibrate because Calibrate works a little faster. But on older computers that are running DOS 3.2 or 3.3, right around there, you want to use Spinrite. That is a much better program and it was built just for these particular types of computers. So I would have to say mission successful. And all the rest of these machines are still flying great. This one here is my EX. It's, it's, it is the cheapest version that you could ever buy at Radio Shack. There's just nothing there to it. No hard drive, no expansion. It does have 640K though. And here's my SX. Now, there have been videos out there that say that um, the SX was not the best selling uh, computer that Radio Shack built. All I know is that at our store, we sold more SXs than we did anything else. I don't know what what the actual, you know, final tally was. I just know that what, when I worked at Radio Shack, we were moving more of these than anything else. And then there's the HX, and there's the TX, the TL, and the RSX. And as a matter of fact, I believe they all, yeah, they're all on. <laughs> they're just in a blank screen mode. Uh, and they're all 100% functional. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Like always, have a great day and a better life. See ya.